Welcome everybody. I talk a little bit about benchmarking and capturing memory metrics. What's wrong? I'm Jens. I'm actually doing e-business, e-commerce applications in Java since 1999. And sometimes I like to dig a little bit deeper into things and like to solve things at the right place. And I'm also a performance fanatic, and that uh, yeah, brings me to the topic of caching. And I write a caching library, with, which is called Cache2K. And so this is like my, my major topic of interest. And because of that, I do a lot of benchmarking. So that's the outline of uh, the talk, a little bit of motivation and how can we gather different memory metrics from the JVM, and uh, or how can we not gather it while running a JMH benchmark. And then I present some results, and then there is some happiness and maybe confusion. OK. Um, yeah, if there is any confusion or some question rise up, please, uh, straight away. So, yeah, why I'm doing this? Um, yeah, there are a lot of libraries with caching out there, and everybody says, like, uh, we are high performance. Um, I'm German. I'm always a little bit more accurate and a little bit more detailed about things. So be <laughs> before I say I am high performance, I better check that. Um, oh, sorry. I use JMH for benchmarking for a couple of reasons. I'm not going into detail uh, about this. This is actually a whole other topic. When you do JMH benchmarking, throughput benchmarking, the primary result, the primary metric you get is operations per second. And um, this is quite nice. And there are JMH profilers uh, that lets you collect a lot of uh, other metrics. Um, but actually, there is nothing. Uh, that lets you collect the mem memory usage right now. But when I do benchmarks about a caching library, then how much memory is used is actually quite essential because a uh, caching library is actually a thing to tune the time and space trade-off. So with caching, you can always trade in memory for faster speed. So, um, yeah, how, what are the different uh, uh, opportunities to um, get memory information? One thing that people are doing is object graph traversing. There is uh, some libraries from EHCache and something that is called Java Agent for memory measurements. So what is happening is that you give those libraries a root object and then they traverse uh, like, a, like a, a scan, a depth, a depth scan into the, the object hierarchy via the references. And then there is some magic, uh, sometimes with some misc unsafe uh, happening to get the size of an object. And then this is summed up and then you have a result. Um, this is quite nice because you can just like uh, fill your data structures and then ask the library, okay, how much memory this is going to cost me. So you can integrate it in continuous integration and get some results out of it. But it also only covers like a partial set um, of the memory. And the other problem is like, um, yeah, how much is actually traversed? Um, do I want, like, how do I keep the thing from traversing the whole heap? And of course, 
um, it's the heap only, and it's only like a static result, and not uh, does not cover um, what's happening when the program is actually running. Um, the other thing what you can do is a heap dump or a heap histogram via JMAP, for example, and count all the objects and um, get a metric um, how much data they um, about the memory size. And yeah, it's actually same as before, but um, it's it's a bit costly, especially the heap dump, and again only a static uh, result. So, what's happening when I run a Java program? So this is the output of Visual VM when you click Monitor and Heap then you see the space allocated by the, by the objects in blue. That's, that's the heap that moves up and down. Down each time the garbage collector does its work. And the orange thing is the total memory that is occupied. So how does this relate to um, my JMH benchmark? And JMH, um, is spinning up a JVM, running its benchmarks in there, and then there are iterations, and you can specify how much iterations you want to do for warming up your workload, and you can specify how much iterations you want to do for actually measurement. In this case, I do two iterations for warming up and three iterations for the measurement. So when I want to know how much heap I use, I can take a look and then I get like interesting values. It could be like down here or up there. So no idea. Um, yeah, so one idea you might have is let's uh, force garbage collection after each iteration. So I filled the data structures, did some warm up, and then let's force the garbage collector and then uh, take a look um, what's left on the heap. Then we have a consistent metric about uh, the heap space. Um, but um, when you compare the two runs of the benchmarks, one with no forced garbage collection, one with the forced garbage collection, you see that uh, it's actually quite different in the shape. So you're actually uh, interfering a lot with what the garbage collector is doing and how would the JVM um, react naturally if you just let it do its things. So, yeah. One short thing, um, who is actually um, working with JMH? Okay, yeah, a couple of guys. Okay, uh, that's great. So is there any remark to this picture here from people knowing running JMH? Is there anything interesting? So the thing is, so these three iterations are my measurement iterations, and we see that actually the garbage collector here is still expanding. So um, with iteration one, two, three, we are actually not running at a steady pace. At the garbage collector is not, oh, sorry, is not yet uh, at, a, at a, sti a stable memory size. So. What might happen is that our results in the, re, uh, in the different iterations are quite different between the iterations because the garbage corrector is still expanding. The other interesting thing is that we have uh, about two garbage collectors, uh, garbage collections happening within the iterations. And this might be a problem as well because maybe there are, there are two happening, there are three happening, maybe just one. 
So it's interfering with our throughput measurement result a lot. So as a general thing, I would say like there are two kinds of micro benchmarks here. There are like the, the, the real micro benchmarks, the micro micro benchmarks where a garbage collection cycle might happen um, occasionally, but um, in this case, you probably want to get the garbage collector out of the equation of your measurement. You can do this by forcing a garbage collection before uh, your iteration, or maybe uh, even use the, the zero GC that is new now, and yeah. However, when you have like a not so micro benchmark, then and the garbage collection cycle is happening a lot during your iterations, then uh, yeah, actually you want it to happen like a lot that it's not interfering too much with your measurement results. And you better know what your garbage collector is doing or the other way around by monitoring what, uh, what the garbage collector is doing and how much memory your, your JVM is using. You get to know what your garbage collector is doing a lot more. So if you cannot avoid the garbage collection, you actually want to make it go steady during the iteration. So, uh, yeah, so what kind of metrics I can extract here? So um, what I did implement is use the things that the operating system is uh, giving us via proc self status. There are two things of interest here. This is the resident set size, and there is also called the high watermark, which is actually the highest level of the resident set size a, pro, uh, a process had in its run. So these are two nice metrics. Um, you can use garbage collector notifications. You actually get a, a notification from the garbage collector each garbage collection cycle and you get some information about the used memory before the garbage collection and after the garbage collection and I take the maximum of that and add it to the um, JMH results. Um, yeah. And a good also feature is the allocation rate, which you should uh, keep a uh, look at. So this is actually the rate, how many objects are allocated. You get this, this is actually built in in JMH with the garbage connector profiler. And then finally I decided like when we are finished with our iterations, then it's safe to do a forced garbage collection and um, use uh, JMAP to get a heap histogram and um, also use the management, management extension to get the value of the used heap. So here's the example of the running scheme I use for the upcoming examples, uh, results. So JMH has a control process, and from that control process, it forks the me measurement JVMs, and you can say how many forks JMH should do, and so in each measurement JVM, there's a warm-up uh, warm iteration, there are warm-up iterations and measurement iterations, and those fork JVMs run uh, one after the other. So actually I have altogether nine measurement iterations here. And so from the primary metric, I get nine results after each iteration. For the memory metrics I gather with the forced garbage collection, I only get 
free because this runs at the end of the fork. So here are some results, but first I need to explain the benchmark that I'm doing. I walk you through. So first, um, here there is, uh, for each thread, I use a fast Zipfian sequence generator. Uh, this is actually a skewed random pattern that yields about 90% hit rate in the cache with this configuration. It's either, yeah. Oh, I see, here's a mistake. I actually um, do it with one million entries. And here's the benchmarked operation. It's actually a cache get. And whenever the entry is not in the cache, a uh, loading function is called. And this loading function is actually uh, using a JMH feature called black hole consume CPU. So there is a heavy penalty when you have a cache miss. So this means there is a lot of thing happening on a single operation, the cache get, and there is some cache eviction, data structures, and garbage produced, and also some auto boxing. That's the benchmark set up the environment. It's a machine with uh, four physical cores. I limit the core usage. I'm not using hyper-threading via CPU hot plugging. The benchmarks runs with four threads. I tested with the Oracle JDK 11 with parallel GC and G1. And for reference, there are the versions of the libraries. These are the JMH parameters. I already talked about it. Um, free, measure, free measurements, iterations, free forks. Give three measurements, nine measurements, iterations all together, and 60 seconds iteration time. Um, the graphs show the confidence interval in the error bars, and GMH uses a 99.9 9% confidence level, which is pretty tough. So these are the performance results. Like the cache to k cache implementation comes with, uh, with 7 million operations per second. But this is actually not what I want to talk about. Let's look at the memory usage for the parallel garbage collector. And here is the heap usage, the different metrics. The first one is um, via JMAP and uh, histogram. The second one is after I run the garbage collector. And yes, and the, the third one also. And, um, like, and the, uh, the, the second one is the use heap, and the third one is the total used memory. So not only the heap, but also the non-heap memory. And here's something astonishing, um, that the histogram actually reports more used memory um, than the man management extension beans. We also see that the error bars here are, like there is a lot of variance in the results here. Let's look at the resident set size. So what's the operating system is giving us. And like, so like from the very right, like this one is the high water mark metric, so the highest resident set size, then this is the resident set size at the end after the garbage collection, and this is the highest amount of me committed memory the garbage collector reported after the garbage collector run, and this is the total committed um, memory that the JVM is, is reporting. We see sometimes there is a lot of variance, and 
But actually, those values are quite close together. Also, when I go, go back here, we see like those values are also quite close actually together. So when we are not like debugging the garbage collector, we are fine just looking at one of these values. Oh, so let's take a look at the G1 garbage collector. Here, uh, uh, the result of the histogram is more consistent with the thing that the VM is reporting via the management extensions. It's pretty much on the same, on the same level. And what is interesting is now that the memory, the actual used memory by the operating system is differing a lot between the caching implementations and also between what the operating system is reporting as, as the high watermark level and the resident set size at the end of the run after the forced garbage collection. So here we get a lot of um, different results. The reason why we get uh, a lower resident set size is that G1 is giving back aggressive, aggressively memory to the operating system. So the high watermark is different. And the other thing is why now there are a lot of different results um, for, for G1 is that um, Actually, we are doing here a throughput benchmark, and the G1 is actually not intended for highest throughput, but for low pause. And this is, you see here, actually the, the toll we're going to pay for that. And because what is happening is that the allocation rate between the implementations is quite different. And the, more, the higher the allocation rate here, there is a cor correlation to the used memory. So, and this is the allocation rate uh, per, per second. Oh, this is wrong here. So this is the allocation rate per second. And this is the allocation rate normed by the operation in bytes per operation. So let's wrap it up. Um, when garbage collecting, collection is happening, it's good to keep an eye of your memory usage. Um, there are various metrics you can or could record that have varying degree of accuracy and, and meaning. And when the gar garbage collection is happening and you're not having like a real micro benchmark maybe, then um, you need to run your benchmarks longer and the more heap you have, the longer you need to run your benchmark iterations for the garbage, to give the garbage collector time to swing in. Um, yeah, the, you can actually use JMH also to construct benchmarks to ev evaluate your memory usage. Um, yeah, be aware of the different garbage collector implementations and their behaviors, or explore the different garbage collector behaviors. And the plan and idea is to see and include those metrics in the JMH code, code base. The code that I did is available at, on GitHub at the cache to k benchmark project. Those are the two classes. And yeah, if you like to have a fast cache, then look at cache to k And yeah, thanks a lot. Enjoy life. <laughs>
Yes? Um, Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. You mean, is there an integration into continuous integration, or? Um, I'm actually doing it, but not in CI, because um, it's a little bit tricky. You need to have the hardware exclusively um, if you want to have accurate results. And like, um, even I don't trust like a Jenkins process or anything running on the machine or doing like network traffic and things like that. So it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky to do it right, but it's it's a good idea to do it, of course. 